There we go. Here we are. Hello. Hi. Hi. Uh, first of all, have you seen the episodes? I have not. All right. Okay. So, all right. So you're you're waiting for for the world premiere then on July eighth. Yep. Yep. Oh, I am. Yeah. So I'm 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 fresh. I will be a I'll be fresh eyes on it as well. So. <laughs> but that's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. Because yeah. it's always great when you can share it with the fans at the same time, in a way. Exactly. Yeah. Which I think will be nice. Um, so I love it. Everyone's always like, oh, and then what happens here? And I'm like, well, technically I know, but like, I don't know what it actually is. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how they put everything together. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So it's actually very, I mean, you know that best, but it's actually very tricky to talk about the show without entering spoiler territory. And we know that, of course, Capcom and Netflix want to keep everything as top secret. So um, it's, it's uh, so, but the good thing, luckily for us, the good thing is that Resident Evil is so huge that it's impossible to run out of content. So there's definitely stuff to talk about. Um, and so I was wondering, first of all, when and how did you first get in touch with the name Resident Evil? So the very first time I ever saw anything Resident Evil? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I think the very first time that I saw anything was at, uh, I was a kid and I was at my neighbor's house. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I have three brothers. And right. so here, I paint the picture. I have three brothers. I am the only girl. Uh, and I lived on a cul-de-sac with uh, lots of kids, but there was very few girls. So it was all boys. And so we would play, you know, a lot of sports and video games. And one of the days, uh, Resident Evil was one of the games that was on there. It was Resident Evil 2, actually, the original. And, um, and I remember watching them play. And then I had seen that they were going to start, like, the next part of it. And they're like, oh, we get to choose who we want to play as. And then I was like, wait, you can, you can play as a girl. <laughs> and then I was like, I want to be the girl. Like, so, and that's kind of how it started was, um, was real life. Cause there wasn't a lot of female characters to choose from, you know, back in the day. Right. So that was a huge thing. So I got to, you know, see Claire, which is so weird when you think about it in full circle, uh, to now get to play her. So, yeah. <laughs> But that's amazing. That's amazing. You know, uh, it's it's funny because, you know, you and I are the same age, so I exactly know how it feels like to grow up with Resident Evil. And my introdu introduction was also Resident Evil 2. But it wasn't actually the game I knew first. It was actually a toy I received on Christmas. I received like a William Birkin toy on Christmas because my yeah. father saw me, you know, in a store. I was looking at that monster and I was like, I was so fascinated. And I did not tell my, my father I wanted, but he actually Re he, he saw me looking at it for you know like 30 minutes or so so he, so that was like my first the first time I, I, I uh, recognized Resident Evil and then of course you want to know what what the toy is based on right <laughs> what is it about yeah that's you know what that's funny now that you now that you mentioned that I mean I feel like my I feel like our neighbors had action figures of different things I remember seeing zombie action figures but I didn't know what it was from originally right yeah we started playing so yeah, that's good. Yeah, you just brought me back. <laughs> right. yeah. do, do you still play the old games? The originals? Uh, yeah. I have not played the originals in a long time. So when I got the role, uh, I ended up trying to go back to see if I wanted to play some of it. And I started to, um, so that was the first time, but I didn't finish it. And the reason being because I, was told to really make her my own. And so I kind of didn't okay. want to, you know? So in a weird yeah. way, um, yeah. But as far as the original, I mean, I haven't played any of the old games in a while. Uh, that's something that I do want to, but I there's been so many new games with Resident Evil that I kind of have to play those. So um, so yeah, so it's been a little, it's been a little while since I've played the originals. I do want to play probably four uh, and Code Veronica just to get a good, you know, feel of them again. So yeah. I think it's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> oh, I've been obsessed with Code Veronica. I love that one so much. Yeah. That one so much. It, it's funny because, you know, um, I do I do reruns, you know, pretty much every year. And so it's, it's funny because so for, you know, for me, the games never got old because 
even though you know we have new consoles and new games but when you play the old games again and again you kind of your brain kind of stops you from from uh, allowing you to to see them as old games and you know yeah. i grew up with my friends playing these games back then in 98 and, and 2000 and when i told one of my friends from back then i'm gonna replay resident evil 2 you know he was like oh my god nostalgia i'm, co I'm coming over we, we play together and and then you know like five minutes in he was like jesus how can you still play this you know because he didn't play it forever he just played it back then and he loved it but yeah. for him they got like too old the gameplay and stuff you know oh to play it once again yeah is it fresh i mean the game controls make a difference it definitely does because it is going to be different you know and especially so for re2 especially that it's like you know you had the camera like overhead so it was a very different way of seeing how the game was played and it was hard oh my gosh it was so difficult too so um <laughs> Yeah, it's been, I mean, I, I understand that. So that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, Stephanie, since um, the franchise, of course, is always about finding pieces and putting them together in order to open a door, um, I was wondering, what are the pieces in your life that you had to put together in order to open the door to Hollywood and success? Oh, wow, we've got a deep question here. What are the pieces that <laughs> put together? Um, you know, that's a really good question. I, I honestly, I didn't start, you know, in this field thinking that I was going to be an actress. Mm -hmm. um, I actually never thought of doing it as, as a career. Uh, I, I went to, I actually went to school for political science and international affairs. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be uh, a lawyer and then I'm going to work for the United Nations and then I'm going to start an NGO. And that was my my thing, uh, which now, funny enough, now that I think about it, Claire does love working for NGOs. <laughs> well, that's kind of funny, but um, yeah, um, I never thought of it as a career. So for me, when I was a child, I loved it. And when I was really little, uh, like I mentioned, I have three brothers, I would actually write plays and perform them and have my brothers perform as the different characters and stuff. And so, uh, that happened ever since I was a child. Uh, so I was doing that when I was in, you know, I was in every play growing up, every single play. I started my own morning announcement show where I would host a show and talk about, um, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, but I, I was known as the art girl. And I would talk about art and like how there's different forms and different mediums of art. And mind you, I was a fifth grader. <laughs> so like, it's a little crazy when you think about it, but so I loved all of those things. And then as I, you know, started playing a lot of video games and uh, I actually got introduced to a lot of Tomb Raider as well. And so Lara Croft became a really big um, kind of character for me that kind of shaped a lot of different things for me. So I started taking, you know, I started having a love and an appreciation for rock climbing and everything survival. And uh, when I went to college, a lot of my classes were anthropology and archaeology. And like, mm -hmm. so it's really interesting because I was kind of always shaping myself in that way. And I just have a fascination for things that are survival. I, you know, I have um, an appreciation for weapons training and for understanding all of that stuff. And so it all kind of came into play. And then by the time I came here to Los Angeles on vacation, and my mom said, you know, you should really try, just give acting a shot. Please just try for me. Like, please just do it. <laughs> and, um, and I did. And, you know, it's a very interesting story. I have a very long origin story. But, um, but I was very fortunate enough to all of those different things and affinities for things that I already loved kind of all came together. Mm -hmm. um, and, and now I get to do what I do, you know? And so, so yeah. yes, I did the acting classes. I did all the stuff, but it was never the original idea of what my life was going to look like. Um, but I feel so blessed and I'm so glad it is, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing because sometimes a dream can become a reality without having known that it was a dream, right? Well, the funny part is if I had listened to eight-year-old Stephanie who mm -hmm. loved acting all her life, my younger, my child version of me knew what my dream was, but never knew that it could be a career. 
Um, so interestingly enough, it was always a passion and always a love and everything, but I just never thought it was attainable. Um, but it is. So, yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I, and what about, because I'm not sure about, I, I don't know about you, but when I was a kid and playing video games, I hated cheating because when I, sometimes I did cheat and I, I realized I'm not satisfied. If I, if it's not my achievements, I'm not proud of myself. So no matter how frustrating it is, no matter how many weeks it takes you uh, to crack a certain level, but you just want to achieve it yourself. And in real life, it's so funny because a lot of times you hear people saying, I want to become a voice actor. I want to become an actor. I want to become a superstar. But other than saying that what they want to achieve, they don't do anything for it. Maybe sometimes without realizing it. Um, and so not doing anything for your goals feels like cheating too, in a way. So I was wondering how, when you started to chase your dreams, how did you make sure you don't cheat your, yourself? How did you make sure that your gameplay in life is as honest uh, as, as possible, no matter how challenging uh, the level called life might be? Yeah, well, like you said, there is no cheat code to life. So, um, and I too, I hate, I hated cheating. What was it like shark? Oh. You know, like a thing that you could buy that you would put into the console and it would give you like a bunch of cheat stuff too. There was like a specific thing called like shark arcade something. Arcade player as well. Arcade player was also something. Okay, that was another one. Yeah. And then obviously cheat codes. But yeah, um, yeah I, uh, I think with everything related to life as a whole, um, I had to realize that nothing could stand in my way except for myself, right? So I had to realize that, uh, you know, because the thing is, there are a lot of people that are pursuing, you know, acting careers and artistic careers in general. And a lot of the times, you know, I, I, I bad in a way to see this, but uh, they get in their own ways you know, because there's either this sense of desperation and this like, oh my God, I must be, I must be an actor or else it's the end of my life. You know what I mean? And it's like, keep the drama for like, you know, the work, not for your life, you know? So, um, so for me, what I, what I tell people is make sure you live your life. Like mm -hmm. the biggest thing I can tell people is make sure that you live your life because you want to live a fulfilled and entire life. And as an actor, you will have nothing to pull from mm -hmm. if you don't, right? You won't have anything like that. So I had to check myself and make sure that I was not comparing myself to other people. Mm -hmm. That was a big one too, like no comparison because at the end of the day, there's only one of you and you will always have a unique perspective. Exactly. Um, so, you know, you'll always have different things that you bring to the table. Um, so I had to make sure I, checked myself, didn't compare, made sure I lived life, you know, a full life with, if I loved something that like, okay, for instance, I love adventure and the outdoors. And to some people, you know, some actors that are like wanting to make it are like, oh my gosh, well, no, what I should be doing is sitting home and studying and I should be doing all the acting classes and I should be networking all the time. And yes, I agree to those, but uh, living my life has actually given me so much more to pull from and makes me so much more of a complete person and mm. doesn't let me get desperate in those moments so that I feel like I need a cheat code because I know that I can trust that all these experiences enrich my life and will enrich my performances, you know, so. That's amazing. And, and, and because one of the other things that is iconic about the games, of course, is the item box. And sometimes you can get very frustrated when you find you found a certain piece and you can't take it with you because your inventory is already full Gosh. so you have to walk back to the safe room to the to the and and to put everything uh, back and it's funny because in real life i feel like you know whenever you chase your dreams sometimes i feel like you have to leave something else behind in order to get somewhere and i was wondering um when when you started to chase your dreams what did you had to leave behind? What did I, have to, I had to leave behind my family. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm on the other side of the country, literally the other side of the country, wow. um, which doesn't sound like a lot, um, but you do miss out on a lot of things 
you know, that are going on back home. So all of my family stay together. And so I'm, I'm kind of the black sheep that visits, you know, for the holidays and things like that, you know? So, yeah. so in that sense, I think that's something that you unfortunately might have to leave behind. Um, if you're fortunate enough, you're in the area that's right for it and your family's there. But I would say that's one thing. Um, I also think you need to, I mean, this is going to sound kind of cliche, but you kind of need to leave your ego behind. Um, right. like that's a big one. Like you gotta just like, you should always be confident in yourself and trust yourself. But I had to like leave my ego behind, like realize that I am new and I am fresh and I am learning. And when you have that mentality of, I am always learning and I'm always new and I will always, that's when I think you actually grow. And that's what I had to, you know, kind of learn is that there will be people that are way more ahead of me or the no way more and so coming into every project in that way of like I can't wait to learn and like leave the ego behind like that I think is probably the two things that I had to to learn another thing I had to learn was um this business isn't always like easy right to get into right, yeah you have to learn to be okay with you know, I'm like, you know, I could have been a very successful uh, person working as a lawyer or in the government, and then I decided not to. So then I had to be very comfortable with saying yes to projects I did not pay well, um, <laughs> you know, but until I would grow, you know, until I built myself into a certain point. So you do have to learn how to uh, also do that. There's a lot of, these are good questions, Carmine. I like these. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> No, but but it's absolutely incredible what you already achieved in your life. I mean, it's it's just it's just mind blowing, and and speaking of successes, I mean, sometimes I feel like you know whenever you achieve a lot, you know, for example, in the games, you sometimes you 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 want to um, the the uh, how do you call it in English uh, the ink ribbon. Is it ink ribbon? The, the, oh, the, like, oh, for the, yeah, the, for the ink ribbon for, type, like, for the typewriter. Type yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So sometimes you want to save those. So you, you kind of, you risk and you play and you play and you don't go to the safe room and then Nemesis comes around and, you know. Uh, well, <laughs> so, my case, Mr. X comes around. Yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and sometimes I feel like, you know, uh, um, you just want to, you, you achieve so much in life and you kind of wish you could put yourself into a safe room and just safe and, and make safe it and make sure you don't fall back because sometimes unfortunately for whatever reason you might fall back you know so um and i was wondering um how if if there if you ever achieve the point in your life that that you wanted to save in order to make sure you can kind of keep your achievements and kind of making sure that you continue from there without falling back? Yeah, I mean, I think what's interesting um, I've noticed is like with this career, uh, you know, you have to, it's personal and it's not personal at the same time. And so sometimes, you know, you may have achieved something awesome, right? Like I got the role of, you know, whatever it might be. And then uh, in your personal life, something happens boom, right? And you get knocked down. And it's like, how do you stay in that moment of achievement and like, hold on to the like, the good thing that you just did, right? Um, and there's definitely been, you know, I'm, I'm a human, just as everybody else. And I think that's a life experience that happens, um, that you kind of, you know, have to wake yourself up a little bit sometimes. And I think, I think the life, life sometimes does that to you too. It's like, yes. we're going to hand you these awesome things, but then we're going to knock you a few times. Right. <laughs> right. And like, how do you, how do you handle that? Um, and I think, yeah, I mean, there's, there's moments that I, I, I love, like some of my big moments were, um, uh, so obviously I said I was a huge Tomb Raider fan growing up. And so, when I was eight, like, I don't know, how old was I? I don't know, whatever. We won't talk about age. We don't need to talk about age. Right. <laughs> um, so, uh, when I was a child, uh, I loved, obviously, Lara. And uh, a couple years ago, I had an opportunity to uh, do the motion capture as Lara for a cinematic trailer. And so, it was for Shadow of the Tomb Raider. And, and so, I got to do mocap. Now, of course, it wasn't for the whole game or anything, but it was still for me. Yeah. 
achievement reached. You know what I mean? Like I just got on another level. Like, so that's one that I'd love to hold on to and remind myself of like those little moments. Um, so that's, that's a big one. And then obviously Claire, I mean, I think I have to, you know, it's funny because, uh, myself, nor anybody else, not even Capcom, we had no idea the game Resident Evil 2 was going to do so well. Um, and so it was a huge, like, I have to remind myself of those things. And those are things that I hold on to sometimes, you know, within, um, as the career progresses and stuff is those little moments of like, oh my gosh, this happened. Like, this is the first day, you know, on set doing mocap as Lara Croft. Oh my gosh, you know, or like <laughs> the first time, um, you know, playing as, as Claire, you know, and then when it comes out to the world, like, yeah, actually, you know, it's a really a cool moment that I had that I would, I like to hold on to is, um, so when Resident Evil 2 came out, mm -hmm. uh, I waited in line at a GameStop with everybody else um, and oh, was going to go get my game. And so I couldn't say that I was Claire. And then I, it was really cool because I saw there was like a line and I was like, oh my God, this is so neat. And so I'm like all super hush hush, you know, and then midnight hit and then they would let us in to go get it. And then that's when it would get announced and people would start playing and see who's who and everything. And so yeah. I, I, I went up to the guy, I was like, hey, so I don't know how to say this, but, and then I was like, uh, so I, I, I play Claire. And then he was like, wait, what? And then he immediately, <laughs> he immediately goes into the whole line. He's like, uh, I just want you guys to know that we have Claire Redfield herself here. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> like, no way. Yeah. And it was so cool because then that was my, that, that was, that actually ended up being my first time doing autograph signings. I just did a bunch of autograph signings. Wow. For, like in a GameStop with like people and people were like, wait, what? And so it was just a really like the collector's cool. editions. Yeah, like that was the original like time I ever did. Any. And so it was just a cool moment for myself and for everybody there. And so that moment was, that was sweet. That was really sweet. Oh, that's brilliant. But that's exactly why you chase dreams, right? For moments like that. I mean, that is like so precious, seriously. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was cool. It was definitely cool. So <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> so as we said at the beginning, it's hard to talk about infinite darkness without spoiling and without pissing off people. <laughs> um, of course, because we all want to be surprised by it. Um, but what we can say is that Claire is still very, very protective. We've seen that in Resident Evil 2 with Sherry. And now we get to see it with uh, the young boy. We don't say more than that. <laughs> but uh, we can say that she's still very a very protective person. And that was one of the sometimes we have to protect ourselves from ourselves, you know, um, because sometimes uh, success can make us change ourselves without realizing it, uh, maybe at first. Um, and I was wondering if there is, you know, once you did become very successful at what you do, if there is something about yourself you kind of had to protect from getting changed. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, what's a big one that I think is, so we as actors and as entertainers uh, have to use social media, right? And right, social yeah. media has kind of become... I don't want to call it an evil, but it's kind of a necessary evil in a weird way. Um, it can be used for a lot of good, but it can also be used for a lot not so good. Part of that, I think, is your privacy and your freedom that you lose. Right. Um, and so I had to learn how to, you know, represent my well uh, myself in a way that if I had to do it, I had to do it authentically. Um, because there's a lot of people that I've seen, you know, within my career and actors in general that start to lose a little bit of their privacy and their freedom because they constantly have this need or feel to like, oh my gosh, I need to post this pic. Oh, I better take a good video of this because I'm doing X, Y, and Z and I need to show everybody. And so I, uh, I didn't want to fall into that. I didn't want to look fantastic in every photo. Uh, I didn't want to do any of that. And so that was a big one. I had to learn. I had to just be like, you know what? This is authentically me. If you're coming to my social media, 
then this is what you're going to get because this is who I am. I also realized that I needed to give myself a little privacy. So sometimes I, majority of the things I don't even post, most of the things I just keep to myself. It's my private life. But there'll yeah. be moments that I will share and I will do it because I want to share it, you know, and I've been fortunate enough to have a really, really awesome fan base of like, yeah. of, man, I'm telling you, some of the most wholesome people are like people that follow, which I think is fantastic. And so it's just, you know, good energy, good, positive vibes just breeds more good people to want to come. And so I've been very fortunate enough to do that. And that's how I've been able to keep myself, I think, as myself, because I, I never compromised um, who I am and I don't want to. So, and I, and I know that means that maybe I don't have as large a following because I'm not willing to post myself a certain way or to do a certain thing, but I'm okay with that because I'm, I, I get to be me and I get to have my life too. So yeah. that's the most important thing to, to, to just stay true to yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Stephanie, my last question to you will be like, because so many fans are still hoping that they will ever, that one day they will get to uh, see a, a remake of uh, Code Veronica as well. And I was wondering if that is something you would actually like to see come to life. Could you imagine, you know, fighting Alexi Ashford in 4K? Gosh, I mean, okay, so I, a lot of people talk to me about this and they always ask me, right? And the thing is, I think it is one of the games that could use a remake. Um, I think it would be awesome. I would feel blessed if I get to play Claire again, you know what I mean, to get to do that. Like, that would be sick. Um, you know, so it's just fingers crossed and, you know, just hope that that's a possibility. Um, but um, I think it would be cool. I feel like it, right? I want to see that like 4K. Uh, <laughs> yes, right. <laughs> yes, I feel like it's so necessary. Uh, but you know, it's Imagine just Alexia and Nosferatu and everyone. Ah, oh. and yeah. Steve, the giant. Yeah, Steve. and Steve. The oh, Hulk Steve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that right. would be, I would feel very blessed to be able to do that. So. <laughs> yeah. All right. So fingers crossed. But first of all, much success with Infinite Darkness coming out on July 8. Very excited for you. Seriously, again, what you achieved is just incredible. Much success going ahead, going forward. And thanks so much for your time today. Seriously, it was such a pleasure to talk to you. Your, your responses were so insightful and inspiring. So Thank you very much for taking the time, Stephanie. Really, oh, really appreciate you, it. Thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. You had really great questions, though. You oh. went, I like I like those, those questions that like touch the soul. You know what I mean? Because you're like, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> so that's good. So I definitely appreciate it. Um, and yeah, hopefully you like, you know, you like the show and everyone likes the show when it comes out. So. <laughs> I love it. And I'm sure the fans will be ah they will so be they will be so incredibly happy seriously i yeah uh, i can't wait i can't wait oh and just so um i mean i don't know if i can talk about this but uh but nick who plays uh leon uh, and i are actually we're doing autograph signings and everything now too so uh so we're putting that out into the into the ether we do that on july 6th so it'll be a fun little like celebratory before the show comes out so we'll just be hanging out and we're gonna ask questions and all that stuff so it'll be <laughs> wow that's amazing seriously yeah. that's yeah. great yeah. Awesome. open up the world so yeah so anybody around the world can do it so yeah <laughs> oh that's amazing that's amazing yeah. stephanie oh, again thank you so much thank and, you uh, hopefully see you soon sounds good all right thank you <laughs> thanks so good. much thanks bye bye